Divine True Spirit Discussions Discussions with people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. Jesus and Mary help spirits in the first sphere who believe in reincarnation and assist other spirits to reincarnate. The session was recorded on the 23rd of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Welcome to everyone again today. What we're going to do today is some channeling with Mary. And so uh, we'll just have a little bit of a pause while Mary gathers herself and, and then we'll get started. Perhaps we should introduce um, the topic in relation to yesterday because I yeah. wouldn't mind mentioning that. Yeah. yeah. So yesterday we recorded a, a personal feedback session, didn't we, about reincarnation? We did. And, and new age philosophies and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. And so following that, all of us here in the studio felt that there was a lot of spirits listening mm. with a lot of questions. Mm. And so at that time, we sort of decided we'd try and channel some of them today. Yeah. And what I found was there were a lot <laughs> <laughs> from various different um with various different issues surrounding yes. what we'd spoken about. Various groups. Yeah, various groups. And so we're going to choose one or a yes. couple, or maybe. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, see. we'll, so we'll do one and then we'll see what yeah. happens with yeah. the next. <laughs> okay. Mm. Hello. Hello. My name is Oriana. <coughs> Hello, Oriana. And my name's AJ. People call me Jesus too. Mary is Mary Magdalene. There were a great number of us here observing your discussion yesterday. Mm -hmm. We were drawn, we we're still unclear as to exactly what drew us to you, mm -hmm. but we became quite engrossed in what you were discussing. Mm -hmm. I myself am a part of a larger group that exists here in the spirit world. I pass from the earth in 1970 mm -hmm. and I was welcomed and told that I was to become a part of a special group that would help those in their transition between lives on earth mm -hmm. that it was not my role to return to the earth but rather to be a shepherd to assist those in this process of review and return to the earth and who told you this well I was welcomed by a group of lovely men who are here with me also. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremiah was one of the men who specifically uh, sought me out mm -hmm. uh, very soon after my passing mm -hmm. and brought me to this group. We are a group of men and women, mm -hmm. but it was largely the men who uh, helped me initiate into this, um, to this special role that I have taken on. Mm -hmm. And um, our purpose is really to assist people to make that um, reincarnation process happen for them. Mm -hmm. And so, as you may um, guess, we were quite well interested in and in quite a great deal of disagreement with what you were speaking of yesterday, as we obviously from our experience witness reincarnation happening mm -hmm. all of the time and it is a very important role that we have been chosen for to assist people in this transition. Mm -hmm. Could uh, perhaps Jeremiah give me some details about how long ago he passed? <clears throat> I will step aside and let him speak directly with you. Mm -hmm. Hi. G'day. Uh, yes, what is it that you would like to know from me when I passed? Mm -hmm. uh, this was in the 1800s. Right. And, and from what background did you pass? Where, what country did you pass from? I was actually English. Right. Dissimilar to Cynthia, who lived in the United States. Yes. And there are many of us here from all nationalities on yes. the earth. Yep. And uh, how, did you how did you pass, Jeremiah? Well... I was um, I was involved in a um, disagreement of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually I was um, accosted in the street mm -hmm. by a, a, an associate of mine mm -hmm. who had a problem with myself. Mm -hmm. 
I myself was quite a pacif pacif pacifist on earth, mm -hmm. but he was, he was very angry and abrupt with me. Mm -hmm. And eventually we came to blows. Mm -hmm. uh, it, during that uh, interaction, I fell and... Um, Hit your head. Uh, yes. <coughs> and uh, this was how I came to enter the spirit world, which oh. in fact was a blessing because I came to understand the significance, uh, if you like, of my role, my importance in uh, a much greater way than I understood when I was on Earth. And who explained that to you? Well, uh, similar to uh, Cynthia yeah. uh, or Oriana, as her name here has now become, yeah. I was met by a number of people who were also um, involved in this work and I was ex it was explained to me that I would become part, this would be sort of a sacred duty that I would take on rather mm -hmm. than returning to the earth. Got you. And um, what has happened to those people who explained that to you now? Do you, do you have much contact with them? No, there no. It is sort of as if there is a chain. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I suppose what I'm trying to do is trace back to the source of the chain. And well, what's happening? Well, this is very ancient. <laughs> yes, I understand that, and that's what I'm trying to do here is to go. Okay, th there's Oriana or Cynthia who who was educated by yourself about her role here, and. And then there was yourself, who has been educated by somebody else about your role. Mm -hmm. And and obviously this chain continues going back. And I just wondered whether any of you have actually traced this chain back to its source at any point in time. Well, well no, we've never, we've known that this is a part of a sort of an ancient, um, we are a part of a lineage which has mm -hmm. its roots in very, very ancient times. And mm -hmm. it, it is though that some seemingly retire from this active work that mm -hmm. we do and so it, and what happens to them do you see them again <coughs> well no they move on to the next sacred duty and we mm -hmm. we are simply awaiting that change for ourselves mm -hmm. and what does your surrounding currently look like in the spirit world do you know what sphere you're in in the spirit world well I'm not really sure I understand your question. We are in um, in this spirit mm -hmm. existence. Mm -hmm. um, do you spend a lot of time surrounding the earth or do you spend a lot of time in the spirit world itself in different dimensional spaces? What what? Well, we inhabit really one sort of location or mm -hmm. um, base or uh, Where your home area is. yes yes but and we are obviously frequently visiting the earth of course and assisting those who come here for a brief period mm -hmm. and assisting them with their transition back to the earth yes and and um well, i suppose what i'm asking is what does your surroundings look like in the spirit world in your spirit home well it is quite spartan we are not into um uh, we are. We feel that it is a measure of our spirituality to be quite focused upon this duty of our of ours, mm -hmm. and so we spend. We do not spend a lot of time decorating or. I understand. Uh, we mm -hmm. things are reasonably functional. Yep. Um, we do not pay that much attention, I suppose. Our attention is based upon our charges, these people who uh, we... No, I understand that. And when you look at each other, how old do all of you look? We don't really examine such a thing. Would you like to do... Can you do so now for me? Well, we look quite learned and aged. Yeah, when you say learned and aged, if you compared it to the average age of a person on earth, what age would it be? We've never considered such things. Hmm. But if, just to help me with the comparison. Well, some of us do look quite ancient, really. Mm -hmm. So you look like in your 60s to 90s, would that be correct? Perhaps more. Perhaps even look older than that? Yeah. Yep. And um, what's the longest time that you're in your group that the oldest person has been there? How long since they passed from Earth? 
Uh, our most senior member, really, mm -hmm. um, is Alfredo, mm -hmm. and he passed from the earth some approximately 300 years ago. No worries. And have you ever asked yourself what happened to those that passed from earth in an earlier time than that, do you feel that they've all gone back to Earth, or do you feel? Yeah, they were either a part of this this line that the those special ones who <coughs> are whose home whose role it is not to return to Earth, mm -hmm. who have who have fulfilled their duties upon the Earth, mm -hmm. and who who now have the experience of a life here, mm -hmm. helping others to come back to Earth. Yes, and mm. then it seems that there is a graduation from this uh, role mm -hmm. and we are unsure what comes next. No one uh, has educated you about what comes next? No, simply they leave yep. and uh, we feel happy for them mm -hmm. that they have obviously fulfilled the part of this duty mm -hmm. that they must have and are now on to the next, well, perhaps some of us are saying, some of the others are saying it's like they go to another home, perhaps, mm -hmm. and have another role. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a part of the workings of the universe, uh -huh. the way that things work. There are, There is a time when each of us must live upon the earth mm -hmm. and uh, return there until we have fulfilled whatever it is we need to do there. And in your opinion, how frequent does that return occur? Like it, it well, is a, very is a, often. When I say the frequent, I'm saying like how many times would one person return to Earth before they get in the position where you are in, where you're helping others to return? Well, this is not clear mm -hmm. because we ourselves are. Some of us are of the opinion that we have never returned to Earth and we are simply, we are different mm -hmm. to these other people. When you say some of you are of that opinion, the others of you who are not of that opinion. Well, there is, for some reason, we do not have a conscious memory of our returns to Earth. Correct. Yeah. And so some of us believe that is because we are special and we have a, a special role. Mm -hmm. um, so Oriana is of this opinion. I myself am of this opinion. Mm -hmm. Alfredo is of this opinion and many others. Mm -hmm. But then there are some among us who ponder mm -hmm. that perhaps it is simply that on passing into this next special sacred role, mm -hmm. we lose the memory right. of these previous So uh, you explain the fact lives. that you don't have a memory of a previous life as to put two possible alter alternative explanations. One possible explanation is that you have only returned, have never returned to Earth. And the other possible explanation is that you're somehow, your memory has been wiped and you can't remember your time on Earth. Yes, as we are, obviously we remember one life upon of Earth. Of course, which you is remember why, your first life on Earth. Well, we remember the one most recent to our mm -hmm. be joining this group. But you can't remember the previous ones. No. no. And so I myself am of the opinion yes. that I am someone who... Has who, only visited Earth once. Yes. Yes. And some of the others are of the opinion that they've visited the Earth more than once, but they cannot remember those visits. Yes. At times we observe different things in the people that we are assisting mm -hmm. in terms of their recollection of lives mm -hmm. and in terms of the way we observe them mm -hmm. then in their new life on Earth and the way that they remember things. It's not consistent. I understand. So there is some... There, there is some system that yep. we are unaware of the full workings of, and that's fine. Yep. This is part of the mystery of existing. Yes, that's what you think is the, tr is, the, is the truth. Well, it is the truth. There is a mystery in existing. I don't agree, but I understand that you do feel that way. So we can talk about that in a minute, but I just want to ask a few more questions first, if we can. Okay. And I don't know who's best now to talk to me about these questions, but whether yourself or Oriana want to talk to me, that's fine. Well, it was Oriana who really did initiate this uh, discussion. Discussion. So she has brought if us. If she wished to return, and we can, we can. Uh, I, yes. I yes. just want to discuss what you observe occurring with regard to those who return to Earth 
um, and then I want to show you what's actually happening. And, and I want to show you things that you're not actually observing. Well, I think I will allow Oriana to step in. Good I think that that's Good Hello, yes. Yes, so you're back, Oriana. Yes. Um, yes, so Oriana, perhaps you could describe to me the process of what happens when a person, what you call, reincarnates to Earth. Well, firstly, we are quite involved at the time of their passing. So what happens there? Can well, you describe? We often go and um, try to assist with that passing. So we try to be a loving presence. We know mm -hmm. that this transition is going <coughs> to happen for this person. Yep. And we are aware that um, th it is likely their duty to return. Right. And when you so say that, what, what causes you to have that awareness? Well, simply, um, it is something in the colours that we observe in the person. And what, what, what colours are you observing? Well, there are certain um, uh, dark greens, some sort of orange mm -hmm. tones that we notice. And do you notice and that it matches with certain belief systems that they have? Well, yes. What we notice is that it is largely... It, what it indicates is a strong association with the earth. And yes. we've come to understand that these people are typically ones who are going to reincarnate. Right. So these are people who we feel drawn to, to assist them, um, firstly to sort of let go of that particular body, mm -hmm. but with the full knowledge that because of these... Um, this drawing to the earth that we already notice in them before they're passing, mm -hmm. that they are ones who have been chosen to to return and reincarnate. Mm. And you, so you use the word chosen, who, who by? Or do you feel well, it's self chosen? No. <clears throat> well, uh, what we really see is it's like a workings of the universe. Mm -hmm. And we know when we, when I say chosen, it is not that we choose them or that others seemingly choose them. It is just that we each feel that we have certain roles and certain um, duties to fulfill. Mm. And it is as if this has been already chosen, already decided. Mm -hmm. um, no, but we see that as sort of the, the workings of the universe. No worries. Um, that these people obviously are designated or it is their purpose or role. Some of us have different words for it, yeah. but it is their destiny or duty or purpose or role to actually, um, we can see that they're, uh, they're unfinished with earth business or mm -hmm. unfinished with earth um, lessons. I understand. Yep. Okay. And uh, if you look at my body, do you see those colours coming out of my body? No. So you would assume then that I would not reincarnate, reincarnate is that correct? No, that's right. Yeah. There are, this is what has brought me here, yeah. is that... Now, do we, you see these colours in the majority of people on Earth? In the, col the colours that you have? No, the colours that, that they have when you think that they are going to reincarnate. Yes, yes. Yes. And this is partly um, some of the questions that I had for you, mm -hmm. is that I can see that the majority of people have those colours. So it is clear how we may assist them. Yes. And we are aware that we are not the only team assisting. We are a, a group of many, but we know that there must be other teams assisting other people um, with this reincarnation process. We are like a unit who, who works together. Yeah, I understand. Um, but some people don't have those kinds of um, colours, but their colours are different from ours. Yes. And so my question, well, really, this was the what only thing that I... if I explain a lot of other things first and then I can answer those questions? Okay. Because I feel we're getting sort of... Um, there, there's a lot of things that can be demonstrated that, that will, will demonstrate to you what's actually happening. But first, I need to know what you actually do. Uh, I feel I already know, based on what I can read from you, what actually you do, but, but for the sake of uh, the people who are listening to us, it would be good for you to explain 
what you actually do once one of these people who has the right colors, the oranges and the greens that you described, um, once, uh, what you do to assist them to reincarnate and how does the reincarnation process that you are thinking is reincarnation actually happen is what, is what we need to demonstrate to people. Does that make sense? Sure. Now, can I describe a little bit of what I think happens okay. <laughs> from what I can gather from yourself already? It appears to me that what uh, is happening is that you have these people, you explain to them that they've just had a life on earth that they need to review, yes. that they need to consider what they have done while they're on earth, and you try to point out to them things that you believe are uh, out of harmony with love, if we could say it that way, or out of harmony with the ethics of the universe. I try to highlight to people the major lessons in their life. In their life, yep. Yeah. And, and you determine those lessons by observation of their own events in their life that, they, yes. that you are able to read as much as you're able to read yes. from, and from the, the person themselves. From the person themselves. But um, we do spend... A, time observing them while they're alive. Yes, we do. Yes, we hmm. spend a lot of time on Earth. We, we sort of feel we have our charges. Our, uh, I understand. So we spend time with them. We, they, they already feel pre-selected to us. Yes. And so we can spend time with them over the course of their life um, or we visit them over the course of their life. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, when they pass, we, do, we are able to um, read and to a degree see what has happened in that person's life and yeah. mm. um, just for a moment I would like to bring a person to you um, and um, the person who's standing in front of you now if, if you can describe them they're um, yes they're, they're quite a young man mm -hmm. who does have dissimilar colors mm -hmm. he seems as if he's from a different universe okay and um, how old would you compare him on earth to be uh, you mean from the form from the way he looks he's presenting yes mm. he, he looks oh, like a late teenager okay and uh, what is his name Simon. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when you look at Simon, can you read anything about his history? No. So you can't read anything at all about his history? No. Yeah. As I said, it is like he's from a different universe. Have you ever seen a person like this before? No. 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 <clears throat> Okay. He's offering, he says he can show me. Correct. And, that, and that's what I'm going to get him to do, to show you his history. Yeah. So what have you learnt about his history? Well, it's from what he presents to mm. me, excuse me. Because Simon. you can't read it. No. Yep. That he is from this universe. He, he did have a life on Earth. Correct. Um... And he's saying that he had a life on Earth really at a similar time to when I did, mm. which I find surprising. Why? Because I will, I've never, in my visitations back to Earth when I'm doing this sacred work, I've never noticed anyone. Like him? No. Mm. So that's interesting in itself, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, so um, uh, what I would like to do at the moment, I know you could ask Simon things now, but mm -hmm. I want to ask Simon things if he could stay with us, uh, um, and we can ask him things as we proceed, because I want him. He, he has his ability to show you certain things that you've not got the ability to see at this point, and what I would like to do is show you those particular things. But before we do that. What I would like to do is um, ask you to describe what actually happens when you actually push or, or help the person who has now had the life review in the 
in, in, in the, the location you're in to go back to Earth. What actually happens? At what time do, does this person enter the new body, if you, if you could call it that? It does vary somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, so do you notice the conception process? No, no, okay. no. We're not involved. Um, this is a this is a purely physical sort of thing, the gestation, and really the new soul, the the new sorry, the new body, mm -hmm. um, the and the soul of this person returning, mm -hmm. come into connection. Mm -hmm. um, often it's quite soon after birth, right. And at times it's within the same family and sometimes it's in a completely different uh, area or region of the world. I understand. There does seem to be some kind of um, attractive force between the person. Mm -hmm. who, you can see colours coming out of the new body. Yes. That seem to match the yes. colours of the person that's reincarnating, if yes. we can call it that. Yes. And uh, the two seem to match and that draws that person to the new body. Yes. And the new body generally is is what you feel is reincarnated. Yep. Um, soon after birth or or before what age generally? Well, I sometimes it says as late as two years old. Right. Yeah. So how did the body survive without the person there up also, until that point? Well, it's a it's a physical organism. Right. So you're and saying there that are there is we must say it is not necessarily um, without connection I to, I understand. Its, to the soul. I understand. Because this is the a sacred... Are... Yes, and also this <coughs> this is a process that is somewhat mysterious to us, but well, I'd what like we to understand you on is... The mystery is what I'm attempting uh, to do. <laughs> because really what is happening or what we understand is happening is that mm -hmm. the life force goes out of that body. Mm -hmm. The person comes here for this... Um, sort of review period where we focus on the lessons mm -hmm. and then they they return back mm -hmm. but during that time it is as if their energy is um maintain or um connected to mm. their to their new to the new body to the new body mm -hmm. but it is not a full connection i understand i understand Okay, now um, one of the things I'd like to ask is that uh, have you ever observed the soul of a person? Well, this is the soul that we are interacting with while um, during this tra this transition period. So, what when you say the soul, you're looking at the person as a spirit in, as a spirit person. Well, we observe this this. I'm a soul. I'm speaking I'm, to you. I understand you that's what you believe. As a soul. Mm -hmm. And and we can often observe the soul then after the reincarnation. Mm -hmm. We can observe the soul still there Which with is, this physical body. I understand. What you do not realise is that you're not actually observing the soul. You're observing the spirit body. A, and, and the reason why you cannot see the spirit body of the child is because the child's brightness is so bright that you cannot see it. And what I would like to do is demonstrate that to you. But isn't the spirit... Isn't it better to demonstrate it rather than argue it? Oh, uh, sure. Because once I've demonstrated it to you, then there's nothing to argue about then. But isn't soul and spirit it's just synonymous? No. No, it's not. Then what do you refer... What is the distinction? Well, let me explain, and then what I'll do is demonstrate that through some examples that that Simon will help us with. Do you understand? I not really, but I'm yep. listen, I'm willing to listen. Let me explain. At the time of conception, there are two bodies created, not one. One body that is created is is the physical body that you observe in the gestation process, mm -hmm. and the other body is a spirit body which also gestates. It also it can be observed, but you at the moment cannot observe it. So what I'd like to do, firstly, as an experiment is have uh, Simon take you to a pregnant woman so that, and he will lighten up the location, brighten it in such a way that you may be able to observe that actually the child has a spirit body as well as a physical one. Mm, okay. 
So if you're willing to, these are a series of experiments that I'd like to engage with you, so to explain to you what's actually happening. Okay, he has shown me that. Mm -hmm. So what questions do you have? Can you see that the child itself has a spirit body and a physical one? Yes, but this is different to the body of that, or to the soul that reincarnates into this body. I understand. It is different. That is what, that's the point I'm making. And it appears differently also. Of course it does. Now let's go to a child of a few years of age. One that you've just recently helped to reincarnate. Yes. And we'll get Simon to display the same brightness. And if you can observe the different bodies that are present, that would be good. So if you can tell me the different bodies that are present. So is what I'm seeing, this brighter body, mm -hmm. is that the soul? That's the spirit body of the child, but that's not the soul. See, what's happening is you've got the spirit body of the person you're trying to reincarnate or help reincarnate is actually overcloaking or obsessing the child, which also has a spirit body of its own connected to the physical body. And so basically what you're assisting to occur is a, what I would call a spirit possession. You're assisting people to overcloak children and, and without observing that the child itself already has a spirit body, they've already, they've already got what you classify as a soul. Um, but this is, what we're doing is the right thing. No. It's been done for generations. I know. And also, it is the right thing. It I know, I know enables a person. That. I know you believe that. But one other thing you haven't observed is this. Every time you assist a person to actually go back to the earth and overcloak one of these children who actually have their own souls, you are actually degrading in your own condition. In other words, your spirit body, your soul, what you call your soul, is getting darker and more difficult to observe to other people. But it... And have you observed that? No, I, I just have another question. Far away. Well, when they go back to Earth, mm -hmm. these people, they understand that, that before they go, they know they, they will have a new identity. They know that even... But what I'm saying is be... there's two identities. There's two spirit no, bodies. That, no, the person who's returning relinquishes that identity that they've had in the no. last incarnation. No, but they are now overcloaking the child. Well, no, they become the child. The child no, is... No, they don't. That's what I'm saying to you. If you now can see what you're observing, you would see that that's actually not what's occurring. Let me explain further. What you believe is occurring is that when you put back, you when you ask a person to go back to their, because you can feel that they wish to go back to Earth, you and you encourage them to go back, what you do not know and what you haven't observed is that this child has already got a soul or a spirit body connected to the physical body. And what you're doing is forcing or helping the person force through, through uh, what I would call attraction. Then if you examine the colours, they're colours are similar and that's why the attraction occurs. And we'll talk about what, what particular colours are what particular emotions in a minute. But, but what's actually happening is this particular spirit is, is now overcloaking and possessing the body of a child when the child itself already has its own soul connected to. But the personality, uh, I, do, I do not understand. I know. The, the personality Mm -hmm. is so, it is the same. No, it's not. Certainly there's different lessons, but it's the same. No, and so what you call different lessons is actually a completely different person. 
And this is what I want to demonstrate to you. But you're not giving not me the chance to demonstrate I, it to you. I, I apologise. You're asking a whole heap of well, questions without getting any validation. And what I would like to do is provide you with the scientific evidence that proves what I'm saying to you. But I, in this last example, mm -hmm. what I observe, is I do not observe a second spirit body. I observe something else entirely. A, 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 it could be a soul. It could be something. It is much brighter. It is. Um, I understand. Its brightness is the result of its condition of the soul. And every child who incarnates is already is is in a pristine condition. And as a result of its pristine condition, you cannot see the body. And this is what I'm saying to you. You can only see it with the help of this bright spirit, Simon, who's with you. If he takes away his the brightness, what do you see? Yes, I do not. I don't see. This is why. You don't see I'm, it, you see. No. And what I'm saying is that it's there. It, you just can't see it. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. okay. And I've proven that you couldn't see it because I'm now showing you something that's there that you cannot see. Now, you're trying to come up with an explanation as to what it's about yes. without knowing what it's about, which is just a postulation or, or a philosophy that you're presenting. And what I'm attempting to say is, no, let's look at the exact situation of what we had. You encourage this person to go back and be with this particular body. And yet when we brighten up the situation so that you can see, you can see actually that there's two bodies, there's two spirit bodies attached. One of them looks exceedingly bright, so bright that you've never observed it before. Mm -hmm. And it's only with Simon's help that you can actually observe it. Mm -hmm. And the other looks the colour that it left when you, when you ask the person to return. Mm -hmm. Now, can you converse with the person? So go to that child. Yes. And attempt to converse with the, what appears to be the adult body. The adult body feels squashed into the small body, doesn't it? If you can see, observe it. Converse with it. What do you notice? Well, I can't converse in the same way. No, you can. This is what I'm suggesting. You do not understand, but you can converse in the same way that you've always conversed with spirits. And what I'm suggesting is you can converse. You just haven't attempted it before. So you're suggesting that I speak to the boy on earth? The boy? No, I'm suggesting you speak to the spirit body of the person that you encourage to go to the boy on earth. Well, he is quite engrossed. He is quite engrossed in his new life. I understand. Life. I understand. But talk to him. Uh, okay. We what do you notice? He can speak as an adult and can he not remember? You ask him whether he remembers his previous life. What do you find? Hmm. He still remembers his previous life, does he not? Yes, I don't understand this. I understand. Instead of looking for an explanation, Let's just look at the empirical data, you know, the scientific evidence that's before you. Now, is the child uh, old enough to speak? Mm -hmm. Can the child communicate? Try to communicate now with the, the bright spirit body. Mm. What do you observe? Can you see that this particular body is not developed? It is the age that the physical body appears. Mm. And it only can communicate in the same manner that the child itself can communicate. Is that not true? Yes. Now, you ask him whether he remembers any previous life, he would tell you that he doesn't understand what you're talking about, would he not? No, it's difficult to converse with him. Of course. And he feels confused, actually. Yes, 
Of course he is confused because he's being overcloaked. But let's let's prove that. Now let's find another person who has been who you have reincarnated 20 years ago. Can you remember the people that you did 20 mm -hmm. years ago? Let's find one of those people. Yes. Now what Simon is going to do for you is again brighten up the situation so that you can see everything that is occurring. Uh, what do you observe? Well, there is, it, it's strange. Yes. There's like almost <coughs> a, I can become aware of another, what you call spirit body. Mm-hmm. So there's two in spirit. close association. Two so, spirit bodies. But I have observed this slightly at times, and all I thought was that this is the, it's the, so the, so you're trying the to suppressed come, memory. You're now of the, trying to come up with an explanation again without knowing the full data. Look at the data that's in front of you first and see and observe. Okay, well, I observe we, we the to, person who I assisted to reincarnate, yes, their spirit form. Talk to them. Okay, yes, I can speak with them. What's the life they remember? The one prior to this. To the life that they currently have. Yes. Yes. But. Uh, right. Now let's try to talk to the spirit uh, form of the person. No, I, can, I cannot almost. Of course you cannot because they are awake and they're on earth. Are they not? Yes. Yes. Okay. What we're going to do now is find somebody that you've helped reincarnate who's currently sleeping, whose physical body on earth is currently sleeping. Can you find somebody that you've helped reincarnate under those conditions who's currently sleeping? So it's, mm -hmm. it's like yes, midday yes, here yes, in Australia. Yes. But no, I found someone. Okay, good day. What do you observe? There's only one body that's there asleep, is there not? Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's two or more chains of connection, colours coming out of them, going somewhere. Is there not? How many do yes. you observe? How yeah. many different strings do you see coming off of them, going to a location you cannot see at this point? Six. Six. Mm -hmm. Okay. What we're going to do now is trace each one of these locations to see those people who are connected to this particular body. Simon will help you do that. Mm. What do you observe? Well, really, I do not, I don't understand. No, but what do you observe? Well, I'll, well I'll, there I'll are explain. many people, there are many bodies, there are many Many bodies connected to this one physical body. Yes, but my understanding... Can you speak to each one of them? Yes. And, but does, and when you speak to each one of them, what life do they remember? Well, it is all the past lives of this young gentleman. Mm. That's what it appears to be in your explanation. So it is like the sole memory of each life. He is not conscious of it when he's awake. No. But in his, when he is asleep, I'm able to visit with the sole consciousness of each of, the, of his previous incarnations on earth. But you can speak to them, can you not? Yes. And do they not look like you? Yes. So what makes you believe they're any different to you? Well, because they're attached to this young fellow. I understand that, but but surely, surely there's a simple explanation for the attachment rather than it being some kind of previous soul consciousness or something. What do you suggest? I'm uh, suggesting that there are six people, six different people who actually were alive on earth in different times who, because they believe that they can overcloak people on earth and they know they can, have overcloaked this one person 
and the actual one person who did you visit the body of the person who looks the same the spirit body looks the same as the physical body no i can't no no no. you can't find him no can simon find him for you yes but he says i'm not allowed to go there why is that (laughs) well he says i won't be nice simon says correct I don't understand that. No, you believe yourself to be nice. Yes. But he's saying that you won't be nice enough to be able to visit the person. Yes. Yes. Can he explain why? Well, he says I want to oppress this young man. Correct. But I don't. You do. You don't know it, but you do. You oppressed this young man right from the beginning because you encouraged another person, another spirit, to overcloak him or possess him. And now he has more than six spirits overcloaking him or possessing him. And that's the result of your action. That's why you are getting darker each time you do it. Every time you get darker, what you don't realise is that it's demonstrating your condition of love. The brighter the person the higher the condition of love. The fact is that your actions are darkening your own condition. And one of the laws of the universe, as you call it, is actually a law that says the brighter the condition, the more love is in the soul of the person. And the darker the condition, the less love is in the soul of the person. And that is a basic law of the universe, one which you have not observed up to this point. Do you you understand? Now what I would like to do is explain to you what is actually happening so that you understand what is going on. Okay. Because you believe in reincarnation and you were convinced that you were special and that you had a role by someone else, they convinced you to go to assist this process of reincarnation which actually does not exist. And what you've done is you've caused a spirit who is now without their physical body, who needs to actually look at, you know, they who can also live in the spirit world, and we'll, I'll show you this and prove this to you. You've asked them to go back to earth. And in the process of asking them to go back to earth, you've damaged not only the spirit themselves, the person who went back to earth, but also damaged the new person who was born on earth, a new incarnation who has never been incarnated before. And because you have damaged both people, even if it's without your knowledge, your condition gets darker, less bright as a result every time you do it. And this is the feedback, if you like, from the universe, as you call it, to tell you that you're actually doing something that's out of harmony with love, out of harmony with brightness. I... It's hard to accept, isn't it? Yes, and I'm not sure that I really accept it. No, that's okay. I can. I would like to provide more evidence that this is actually what's going on for you. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Mm. I, yes, I... I have to say I'm finding it difficult to to remain here. Mm-hmm. So that, please hurry up. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> but please, if you can, could I explain hurry. why you're finding it difficult to remain here. Yes, it's because what I'm explaining to you is against something that you already believe, and because it's against something you already believe, you do not wish to have more of a discussion about the matter. But the discussion will help you greatly. It will stop you from further degrading in your darkness. It will help you become bright if you engage the discussion further. But it is your choice as to what you choose to do. You can choose to do something that you believe is true, but actually is harming people. Or you could choose to examine something and, and, and improve your own brightness and actually learn about what's actually going on in the universe. 
but it's going to be challenging because it's going to confront many of your belief systems. The key is to not judge these system, belief systems that you have, but rather just to feel about what you're being presented and be logical about your exp the examination of the evidence. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Please, I, I'm, it's limited the amount of time I can stay here now. There's a lot of antagonism. I, I, please when, hurry. When you say there's a lot of antagonism, where is the antagonism well, coming from? Many people do not want me to stay and listen to what you're saying. When you say many people? Uh, from the group. They've already left some of them and others are telling me I have to come back. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't agree. I don't agree. You do not need to follow their advice. And by the way, I feel those other people need to come back because, because they are potentially doing something that is going to further damage their own condition. And unless they learn the truth about what's going on, there is no other uh, potential outcome but damaging their own condition. It is far better if they come back and have an open heart and an open mind and discuss the matter with, with looking and examining the evidence rather than it is to run away from a conversation that prevents evidence that is in disharmony with what you already believe. Particularly when there's the potential of you becoming brighter in your condition and, and becoming younger in your personal appearance, just like the man, Simon, who's in front of you, looks. Okay, please tell me what you need to tell me. Okay. Please. Yes. Now, the key is to not panic because, because that's going to harm your examination here. What I'm going to do now is ask Simon to show you how old he looked when he passed over the first, when he first passed from the, from the earth. What do you notice there? Yes, he looked old. How old would you? Well, he's showing me he was 80, 80 something, 82, and, and he looked old on earth, but he's mm. also showing me he, he looked bad. When he passed? Yes. In his spirit body? Yes. What you call the soul? Yes. Does he call that the soul? No. What does he call the soul? Well, something that I cannot yet see is what he's saying. Correct. Correct. This is what I'm trying to get to, to is that actually the soul is a completely different form than the two bodies that you're observing, the physical body and the spirit body. And when you look at each other, all you can see is the spirit body of a person. And when you come to earth, you, all you can see is the physical body of the person that you're asking other people to reincarnate into. You cannot see the spirit body of those, pe of those babies because those, the baby spirit bodies are brighter and therefore more difficult to see for your eyes at the moment. Does that make mm. sense? Yes. But, That's so, why you can't see them. Sometimes I see what I would call the, the consciousness of a previous life already with that baby. That's, that's another spirit who's trying to reincarnate into the same child. Okay. And, and in many cases, there are many children on earth that have four or five or six, as you've observed in, in the person you've just observed who is in, in their 20s, who have four or five or six people who are trying to reincarnate into them. And I always thought that that was a previous life of this person who I'm now helping to reincarnate and also. It, but it's not. And if I've you, told them that they, they can... But it's not, because if you actually talk to those people when the child is asleep, you will see that they all remember their previous life and only one life. They are all the same as you. They are all just spirit bodies, people with their own consciousness. Okay. With their own individual consciousness. Then what's going on? What's going on is you're taking on a role which is actually not natural in the universe. That's what's going on. And you're convincing people who pass and also convincing people on earth that it's a necessary part of their development when it is not. There is no need to do it. And but 
I was taught that this is the right thing to do. Yes, by people who were just as well versed about the secrets of the universe as you are. In other words, people who knew nothing about the process. They knew a lot more than me. But they knew nothing compared to what I've just shown you. They did not know that there was also another body. They did not know that they could speak to each one of those bodies. They did not, you know, the spirit bodies that are attached to that child. They did not know that they were encouraging attachments, what I, what I would call possessions of the child. They did not know. And so they could not tell you what they did not know. And they appealed to your desire to be special, to become involved in this process. They appealed to an emotional injury inside of yourself to actually engage this particular process. Does that make sense? So what should I do? Well, every time you engage in this process, your condition will get darker. And well, eventually, you keep saying that and I don't really understand what you mean by that. Your condition, you will look older and older and eventually you will not have the energy to even engage in the process anymore. It isn't... What's wrong? Like, and many of the people what? who have left you in the past have left you because of this reason. Can I show you some of them? Isn't that like a passage into their next... No, I want to show you what you think is a passage into their next life. Because this is a very important thing to know. Okay. What we're going to do now is to get Simon, if you can tell Simon, one of the people who passed from your midst, who you believed were, was, you know, passing to another role, another sacred role, as you call it. Mm -hmm. and, if, and he will get some people to help him find that person. Mm. Now what we want to do is show you that person and where that person is. very sick. Yes. I have to help him. Well, you can't help him unless you learn why he's sick. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Makes sense, doesn't it? That you can't really help a person unless you know what their, what their cure is. Yes, okay. So this man is very sick. Now Simon's going to explain to you why he's very sick, because he can do it a bit more rapidly than I can. So what does he say? Well, he said a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but the basic from, summary is... From doing what, what we do. Correct. It's made him sick. It's made him sick. And this is my concern for yourselves as a group. The more you engage in this process, the sicker you will become. And eventually you'll become so sick that you will no longer be able to engage in the process. Can you also see how dark his condition is? He's not only sick, but also he appears to be much older than you even appear, does he not? Mm. And he appears to be very darker. It's hard to see him almost, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is so dark. Mm -hmm. He's like a shadow almost. He's like a shadow almost, yeah. We just thought Can that... Can I explain to you why that happens? Well, because Simon told me. Mm -hmm. What's the explanation? Well, because he did these things and they were wrong. Mm, well, let's explain and it more clearly, can we? Well, I, it's okay. Yeah. This, this ageing, what I thought was ageing, is not natural, is what he says. Correct. It's not a natural part of the spirit existence. It's caused by your choices after you've passed from the earth. Yes, that's what he's The reason told. why every one of you cannot remember a previous life other than the one you left on earth is because you've never had one. And nobody has ever had one in fact on this earth aside from 14 people. So what is this thing that we're doing then? You are and assisting. And why did they teach me to do this? Because they, they did not investigate the truth either. You see, this is the problem, is that when we start to do things without understanding what we're actually doing, and when we're encouraged to do it because we have certain emotions that cause us 
to say, well, yes, I want to be special, so please give me a job and it makes me feel special. When we engage in things without knowledge, sometimes we engage in things that are out of harmony with love. And when we engage in things that are out of harmony with love, our condition gets darker. The brighter the person, the more love exists within their soul. Their two bodies, their physical body and their spirit one, but in particular their spirit body, demonstrates the condition of their soul. Mm. And the condition of the soul is dependent upon how much love that particular person demonstrates. Every single person who becomes a spirit like yourself, who then assists other people to reincarnate onto earth, because it's not a actual process that exists, that's in harmony with love, but rather a process that destroys the lives of not only the spirits reincarnating, but also the new people on earth, it means that it's a very unloving thing to engage. And since it's unloving, it causes the degradation of the person doing it. I need to go and just think about what you've said. Well, I don't feel I, you do. There's so much information now. I don't feel you do because there is. I want to explain to you that you can also become brighter than you currently are. There's a way to become brighter and there's a way to become darker. Yes, okay, tell me. Well, as I've explained, when you become darker, it's because you're doing things out of harmony with love. The way to become brighter is to do things in harmony with love, in agreement with love. But you have to learn whose definition of love that is. I feel so angry because I thought that I learned the truth. I understand. And I don't but the know who, how I can trust anyone again now. I understand that. But I would ask that you stay because we can explain who you can trust and who you can't trust. Okay. The people you can trust are the people that are in a brighter condition than yourself. So when you look at your own body and then you compare your, the look of your own body with the look of the body that, of Simon, what do you notice? Yes, we know he's brighter than me. Okay. So a person who is brighter than you can be trusted because they have more understanding of the universe and that it operates in harmony with love. A person who's darker than you should not be trusted. Now, unfortunately, you did not know that when you passed. And because you did not know that, people who were darker than you came to you and convinced you to engage in a task that was out of harmony with love that has actually caused you to get darker yourself. So how do I find the people like Simon? You can personally become a person like Simon. But I can't unless I know what to do. Correct. And that's why it's important you stay in the conversation. Well, shouldn't I just find people like Simon and they can tell me what to do? Of course. That is the most simplest thing you can do. But you would need to understand what they mean by what they say. So if you let Simon explain a few things to you about how he became brighter, Is there any questions about that? I feel like my head is going to... Explode <laughs> with yes. thoughts. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> what did he say? Well, it's so hard to even... He communicates in a way that it's not really words. He gives Correct. me impressions and... Feelings and... Yes, and ideas and... Uh, And so I, it is, I have to do everything different to how I've been doing it. Everything, everything, everything. Correct. And Simon can speak more slowly to you. So let's say he do, does that for a moment. So you notice yes, he can communicate with voice. Yes, but I understand he just wanted to tell me quickly. Not only did he want to tell you quickly, but he wanted to give you the feelings associated with what he was telling you so that you didn't misinterpret them. You see, he could have used words, but
But the problem with using words is that you might misinterpret them. Uh. And that's why he communicated with you by the form of pictures and feelings. They are much uh. harder to misinterpret. Uh. Uh. That makes sense? Yes. So, it does make sense. Yeah. So he has the ability to demonstrate to you how to become bright, does he not? Yes, I just feel so disillusioned. I understand. I don't know what... Disillusionment is a feeling, and what has he said about feelings? What has he shown you about feelings? I can't avoid it. You just need to feel them. You just need to let yourself feel them. You see, one of the reasons why you've chosen to do what you've done is because you were avoiding some feelings. Feelings that you had on earth. Feelings that you weren't special, that you weren't honoured, that you weren't approved of, that you didn't have a role, and other feelings. And then when somebody came to you in the spirit world and offered you a role and offered you those feelings, offered you approval and acceptance and so forth, because of that addiction which was established on earth to have that feeling, because you never really had it on earth, um, you engage the role that was explained to you, not understanding the full consequences of it. Does mm. that make sense? Mm. And one of the reasons why, right at the beginning of this conversation, I asked for the person who led you to that, Jeremiah, mm -hmm. is because Jeremiah is responsible for that occurring. And the reason why I asked Jeremiah who led him to that is because the person who led him to that is responsible for that occurring in him and so forth, back. Yes, it seems that we were all trying to do the right thing. That's what it feels like to no, me. No, it was your definition of the right thing. That somebody taught us and we trusted them. Correct. But as I've said, you were trusting a person. If you, if you can recollect at the time of your arrival in the spirit world, if you now if you go back to that point and look down at your body, what do you notice? Yeah, it looked better than now. Yes. And what did the body of the person who was explaining to you this role look like? Yeah, I didn't take enough notice. Well, I'm not criticising you actually because it's normal for most people who learn very little about passing on earth to assume a whole heap of things that are not true even after their passing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And this is, what, this is the lack of education that exists on earth is the primary cause of events like of what has happened to you. Mm. Not only is it a primary cause, but you imagine how many groups of people there are like yourselves who have been assisting other people to reincarnate, thinking that you're helping them reincarnate, when in actual, when in actual fact you're damaging your own condition and the condition of the persons who they are incarnating into or attempting to incarnate into. Mm. There must be millions, is there not? Yeah. And this is why I would like to trace back to the persons who began this process as far as we were able. Mm. Because whoever began the process was already in error. And the error has been perpetuated to these millions and millions of people who now have become spirits, who are all trying to encourage other spirits to reincarnate when reincarnation, as, as they've described it, is actually not possible. All that's possible is an overcloaking or a possession of the person who is on earth. Yes. And in the end, these people on earth become so confused because they have four, five, six, even more. And some of them have 10, 20 people connected to them, telling them what to do, telling them what, causing them to have feelings that are not their own, that the average person on earth is so confused about what they feel themselves and what is the feelings of these so-called past lives. Mm. That they, and they start to try and explain this confusion by telling themselves there is past lives when there, in fact, is only one life on earth. Mm. Okay. Does that make sense? Now look down at your body. Mm. What do you notice? A little bit better. It's a little bit better. Do you know why that's happened? No. Because you've been open enough to stay in the conversation and learn a truth. So if I get better in my body, mm -hmm. then I can trust that? 
You can trust that. That, that is, means I'm doing something right. Correct. Okay. Correct. And if you get worse in your body... It's because I'm doing something bad again. Yes, because you're doing something out of harmony with God's laws of love. There is a God. Yeah. Now, you can connect to that God if you desire. And we can even prove there's a God if you wish. I feel like I need time. I need to just... Mm -hmm. Well, I'm happy for you to come back again at any point. And How remember, would... Simon is also happy yeah. to help you. The way you can get help is to ask somebody like Simon to come to you every time you need some help. So there's times when you'll probably want to be alone and you'll want to feel about things and you'll want to rec you know, think about what we've talked about. But don't get yourself into too much self-punishment here. Remember that you were misled by other people who were misled and they were misled by other people who were misled. Mm. Do you see? Yes. So it's a long chain. It's a long problems. chain of people telling other people untruth. And every one of them now is like my old friend who's lying sick. Yes. Who can't move. Yes, every one of those in the past that left you only would have left you for one or two of two reasons. Either they became darker through their actions mm -hmm. and therefore could no longer sustain their actions any further because they didn't have the energy to do so. Mm. Or they became brighter in their actions and they left you for a brighter place. But the only way they would become brighter is by stopping what they're doing and taking responsibility for it and actually feeling sorry for it, feeling repentant for it. I've just realised that I've never visited my own family from Earth. Correct. I've been completely distracted by what? what we're doing, this special thing I thought we were doing. You were distracted by one addiction, and that's the addiction to be special. I don't feel special now. No. Well, this is the problem with the addiction to be special is eventually it turns out that you're not, you know, it doesn't feel special anymore. But can I say to you, though, that God, your true father and mother, believes every one of his children to be special. So how do I prove that God exists? How do I know that God exists? Well, it's quite simple, actually. What you can do is you have a feeling in your soul to ask God. So you just say, God, if you exist, can you give me an indication you exist? sort of feels like there is. So you've got to open yourself up to the feeling because God communicates with feelings just like Simon communicates. Mm. So what do you found? It's a nice feeling. You're receiving some confirmation from some source, are you not? Mm -hmm. That God exists. Mm -hmm. Now ask Simon. Remember, Simon's in a brighter condition, so you can also ask him whether God exists. What does he say? Yes. Yes. So God exists. She, he showed me wonderful things. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'd like to ask Simon to show you where he lives just gives you pictures and videos of where he lives. Oh, wow. Yeah. Remember, I, at the beginning of our conversation, I asked you where you live. I asked Jeremiah, remember, and he said he lives in a Spartan location. Yes. Yeah. It's very different to the location that Simon yeah. lives. It seems fresh and bright and beautiful where he is. Correct. Here it's not like that. No. Where you live is a reflection of how much love you have in your soul. Now there's two ways to get more love in your soul. Mm -hmm. One way is a, is a long way, like a, it takes a lot of time, and that is by letting go of every unloving thing that you've ever done in your whole life. Okay. The second way is to ask God for God's love and to be willing to cry 
willing to repent for what God shows you through that process. Is it, you talked about this? Mm. Remember, I talked about that yesterday. I just remembered. Yes, mm. this worried me somehow. I talked about the principles of forgiveness and repentance, and the principles of the law of compensation. Yes. The slow way yes. is called the law of compensation, and the fast way is by repenting, by asking God for forgiveness. Uh -huh. Do you know how to ask God for forgiveness? No. You know how just before you had a feeling towards God that you wanted to know from God whether God exists? Yes. Well, this time all you do is have a feeling towards God about feeling sorry about what you've done with this reincarnation process that you thought actually was happening. And to receive some of God's love. You have to have a feeling that you want some. It's too, I, I can't, I know more now. It's too much to think about. I, I still don't even completely understand what it is I've done. I need to sit and think about this. Can I suggest to, to you... to understand properly. Can I suggest to you this is the problem that you have? You want to understand something intellectually before you do it. And yet you didn't understand what you were doing when it came to the reincarnation process that you were trying to encourage people to do. So what is the alternative? I just change? I just go, oh, well, I did it wrong. I'll just do something different. I need to make sure I don't do a wrong thing again. Now, God's okay with you making mistakes, right? It's just being open to learning about them and, and asking for forgiveness if they are out of harmony with love and, and to feel a sense of forgiveness, uh, of repentance in your soul. So what I'm going to encourage you to do, instead of thinking too much about it, is to ask for God's love, because what God's love does is it opens up your soul so that you can understand. If you okay. receive some okay. of God's love, you'll be able to sit down later and, and look at, back at our conversation and understand almost all of it. But if you don't receive some of God's love, you'll find understanding it intellectually quite difficult. Okay. Does that make sense? Now, can I ask how many are still in your group? Did all of the ones who went away return? Oh, yes, yeah, some did. Hmm. Yes. So that's good, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. And have you noticed that many of them have also changed in their brightness? Yes. So what's that an indication of? That they were open enough to hear some truth. Yes. Oh, the real truth of the universe. Yes. Yeah. So that's a very important lesson of the spirit world. The more open you are to receive truth, the brighter you will become. Mm. The also happier you'll become because you'll know what you're actually doing. Mm. So now I have to ask God. You don't I have to. to. It's your choice. You're allowed, you, it's up to you to make the choice. But if you would like to receive some of God's love, have a feeling towards God that you would like to receive some. That's all you need, just a feeling. Now, sometimes when we receive God's love, it causes us to cry. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because it shows us things. It makes us more sensitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay to cry. If you have, a, if you ask, remember you can ask Simon. How much crying did he have to do? <laughs> a lot. Yeah. A lot. And was it worth it? Yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Look at where he lives now, right? Yes. So it's okay to cry. Okay. And it says, yeah. you're trying to shut down your crying. Yeah. And that's what prevents God's love from flowing. Yeah. You're trying to withhold the feeling that it triggers within you, the feeling, the underlying emotions that it brings up. You don't need to do that. You can relax with that. 
it will bring up all sorts of things and all you need to do is let yourself feel them just like Simon's done and any time you need any assistance Simon can always give you assistance and he can also bring some other people there's plenty of other people who want to help can we show you them? oh my goodness mm. and why didn't you see them before? I don't know, they're everywhere, everywhere. I feel, now I feel overwhelmed. Yeah. Now ask them why you couldn't see them before. Oops, I didn't want to. Yeah, because you were blocked to truth. You were blocked to knowing. You didn't want to know what was really going on. And you know what was a really fortunate occurrence? The, f the fact that you heard our conversation yesterday and you wanted to know. <clears throat> Thanks. Hmm. And it can bring a lot of benefits knowing the real truth, knowing God's truth. Hmm. A lot of things are a lot clearer suddenly. Yeah. Yeah. Have a look at your surroundings. It's better. Yeah. What does that tell you? More truth. More truth, more love. Thanks. So now you know how you can help the person who led Jeremiah to this. He needs to learn the same thing, doesn't he? He needs to give up his concepts of reincarnation because it's not true. It doesn't, it's not, it just doesn't. There is a truth in reincarnation, but Simon can tell you that truth. But, but it's not what you've been doing. Thank you. Mm. Okay. Thank you for your help. Yeah. It's been really Thank good. Thank you for you helping me see all these. It's really people. good that you stayed in the conversation. I know it was challenging. And it's really good that you did. Because if you didn't, you'd keep doing something that would just keep worsening your condition. Thanks. Mm. It's my pleasure. Okay. Mm. Bye. Bye bye. What ama you know, what amazes me, people are so fixed in their belief system that the mounting evidence eventually becomes overwhelming that their belief system is wrong. Yeah. But but every new bit of evidence before that time is is explained away by some concept or principle that they haven't thought of before. Yeah. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? that's what that's <coughs> what I see people doing on Earth all the time. All as the well. time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in almost every conversation we have with them, it's sort of every time something happens for them, instead of facing the truth, it's like, oh, let's explain that away somehow. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what that group were doing. I thought, oh, it's a bit spooky, I, mean, I think. Spooky? Mm. It's sad, yeah. Huge number of people on earth just overcloaked by so many spirits, it's amazing that they do don't you, even know who they are. Do you, yeah, do you think that they are, like, fully overcloaked, or do you think that A lot of times. So, like, people are walking around basically... And particularly if they get convinced to go to a past life regression therapist or get convinced to... Do something like that. So there might be a spirit there waiting since since their birth, birth. who then can Gets really them to go get to in. a past life regression yeah. therapist. Yeah. And then there's a strong, stronger connection, and it's like a possession now. Yeah. yeah. People do so many dangerous things, and 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 the spirits who govern it, like this group of spirits, become very like firm about the fact that they're right doing it as well. So it's like. Yeah. Yeah, they were very firm, weren't they? Yeah, sad. Sad because it's like their lives are destroyed. The lives of the spirit they've come, they're encouraging to come back to earth is destroyed mm. further, you know. And then the person on earth who started out as a pristine soul mm. and even after they're born are still fairly pristine um, gets overcoat by the person and manipulated by them all their life. Yeah. And they don't even know, they die and don't even know who they are half the time. Yeah, I find that tragic. It's just tragic. Yeah, tragic. And then they arrive, come into a place like 
Ariana arrived, Cynthia, and yeah. she arrived in this place where she's now instructed that she needs to do that for other people. And yeah. then they darken their condition even further, you know. It's yeah. just a like sad cycle that's like going on for centuries and millennia, really. Yeah, and <sighs> it feels really sad to me that they're, re they're basically exploiting emotional injuries within people mm. without even really understanding it. They're just seeing but a lot of, what they call a, lot like of a resonance that, or a though. colour or whatever and then think, no, that's what it's meant to be like because that's what they're like. And so this woman coming, she's got this colour, we'll, she's a part of our group then and we'll initiate her into this group or whatever. That's what it seems like they're yeah, doing. Yeah, but, but if you look at every... Like we've had conversations with Christian spirits when they passed over... They passed over and Peter, St. Peter came to them, who was in a darker condition than they were when <laughs> he yeah. just looks old and decrepit, right? And yeah. comes to them and says, I'm St. Peter. You're really doing a great thing. Really believe it. You've got to help all these Christians on earth believe the same thing and uphold my church, you know, and all these things. So what do they do? They run off and do that for him, not realising that the person just talking to them has, has completely falsified his own identity as well as, mm. as well as encourage them to do a whole heap of things that are false. Yeah. That, have only, that only can continue to darken their condition and make them worse. Mm. It's no wonder there's so many people in the hells. Even after you pass, you still keep degrading because of the choices you make. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's sad. Mm. That's why it's important to have those sessions with those spirits because it's just without helping them get beyond the condition they're in, the cycle would just keep going around and around and around and around and around <laughs> for millennia, you know. Yeah, I find it really sad. Mm. I find it really, I'm a bit confused. Depressed about it. <laughs> Depressed about it, yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. But it, how much of that's her <laughs> feeling of I know, I'm just <laughs> feeling like I need like five minutes time out because I, I'm... I found it really, it's another one that was challenging for me to do. When they want to leave, holy mackerel, I want to let them leave. You yeah. know, yeah, I really just go, okay. But it's just not the right time to let <laughs> I, them leave. I understand. Then, you know. And she, the shift she made at the end, babe, when, when she saw, and I'm emotional about it because I think it, it um, triggers in me as well how much I'm blocking out the, the assistance that is around us. But as soon as she saw all those people there, it was like, she wanted to see them. There were so many who'd been tr waiting to try to help them for so long. Mm. And then um, she just suddenly felt more trusting just because the entire environment around her changed and could feel then, no, she's going to make a shift. That's the f Only then was the only time where I felt That's her why shift. I needed to hold her there as long as I, I could. I know, but mm. she was when they, when she, she was super panicked. I know. And it's horrible. Well, because she was losing all the people who were providing her with her self-esteem. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the group. The group together were providing each other with self-esteem by telling each other that they're special. They have mm -hmm. a special role. Mm -hmm. Don't you realise you're special? You've got a special yeah. role and so forth. Yeah. And then yeah. when half of them want to clear out yeah. and go, no, I'm angry now. This yeah. is not good. Yeah. You're doing the wrong thing now. Now she's not receiving that projection. So it's one of her major addictions. And as soon as one of her major addictions not getting met, she wants to clear out as well. Yeah. And this is very similar to what happens to a lot of people Don't on earth that we talk to. You know, yeah. they're, they're there, you know, they'll stay engaged in the conversation until you don't meet any of their major addictions and then they, they want to <laughs> immediately yeah. clear out after that. Yeah. And, you know, if you can get them over that hump of, you know, running away just because one of their addictions are not getting met, yeah. then there's a chance to get some truth in. Yes. <laughs> but not until then, generally. Yeah. 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 Anyway, oh, you intense. probably need to have a bit of a break so you can recover. And yeah. <laughs> I'll ask you whether we <laughs> can do another or not. Yeah, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Thank you. So darling. hopefully, everyone, you've enjoyed that particular <laughs> session and, uh, and we'll come, we'll come back potentially afterwards. <laughs> These will be our last, I just want to explain to you, this will be our last recordings for a little while. Um, Until we Because we're going to have a couple of weeks break and... and um, we're, we've got a lot of preparation to do for the upcoming assistance groups and we've not started the preparation yet. We've mm -hmm. done a lot of technical preparation, but very little preparation for the group. So of the material. Of the material. Yeah. So yeah. what we're going to do is prepare that material 
and uh, and we also have some testing of some equipment that we're, myself and Igor are working on. And, uh, and in the process of testing, you may find there's a few more videos that come <laughs> up before the assistance group, but there won't be too many because we've got quite a lot of things that we need to get ready. And, uh, and for those of you who are at the group, we enjoy to see, look, uh, forward, to look forward to seeing you there. And for those of you who are not, we, for, I'm sure you'll enjoy the videos from them anyway. So hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll benefit you a lot. But thanks for your time again, and, and thanks, Mary, for doing our channeling today. Thank you, Don. Even though it was a bit stressful. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's just it's a good test of my humility. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks, everyone.